Okay guys, financial derivatives. Now this is lecture two, and it's gonna be a long lecture to complete chapter one. So we did chapter one, we're doing today is introduction. Then we did in the previous class, section one, one, <coughs> derivative markets and instruments. <coughs> That's for you. Page number two, page two. One, two is, which I covered in great detail, underline. That's on page four. Now we got section one, three, important. Concepts. One, three, one. The first is risk preference. Risk preference tells us the attitude of investors towards risk. Some people like risk, some people don't like risk. Most people don't like risk. We call these risk averse. Risk averse is an investor who does not like risk and prefers to avoid risk or to lower risk if they can. This is known as risk aversion. Is the desire not to take risk, to lower the risk or to avoid it if possible. Risk is usually something that is not desired because most people are risk averse and therefore in order to induce, to stimulate investors you have to give them a special extra, a return, something in return for the risk and we call it risk premium. Risk premium is the compensation to the investor to take extra risk. And the risk premium usually comes in the form of extra return, of additional return. So, the most fundamental concept in finance is that of risk and return. Risk premium is the same as the extra return. The most fundamental concept in finance is that higher risk brings higher return or higher risk brings higher risk premium. The other most fundamental concept on which the whole subject of finance is built is anybody you studied at the very beginning of financial management 
the two foundational pillars of modern finance are risk and what's the other one? Again? Cannot hear. No, 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 no. Risk is the same as return, right? The other concept is time value of money. So these are the two concepts together with, again, risk aversion on which the whole subject of modern day finance is built from scratch. Time value of money says that one dollar today is more valuable than a dollar tomorrow. Next, number two, one, three, two. Short selling. Three. Long means that you have the right. Okay. And To be short means that you are effectively selling. So when you sell a futures, you sell it that you are short. When you sell an option, you say that you're short <coughs> the option. When you buy the futures, you say that you're long. When you buy an option, you're long. Okay, let's say it here. What futures give you is the ability to short. I don't want to get into that. That's simple, easy, daily, straightforward. Selling short creates a liability. It creates an obligation, okay? And selling short is usually riskier than selling long. We'll discuss this probably in lecture three or maybe this afternoon. Okay, one, three, Three, repo. Repo stands short for repurchase agreement. Repurchase agreement is a sale, sale of an asset with the immediate agreement to buy it back in the future at a higher price. So, I sell you the security today for 97 and I agree to buy it back at 100 one month from now. Okay. The difference between the buy and the sell price or the sale and the buy price is the return respectively the cost meaning I sell it to you for 97 and then we'll buy it back for 100 100 minus 97 3 for me 3 is the cost for him 3 is the return okay daily straightforward repos are considered to be extremely low risk They are considered to be so low risk 
that we approximate, we think of them as risk free. They're almost risk free, okay? So, repos are an instrument of almost risk free lending. So, a repo is legally a sale with the agreement to repurchase. The economic meaning of a repo is a loan. A repo is simply a secured loan. One, three, four. I already cover risk and return. Return could be dollar return. Dollar return is how many dollars you gain. We just said 100 minus 97. The dollar return for him is 3. Or it could be percentage measured as percentage. And 3 out of 97 is just a little over 3%. So just a little above. 3%. So, you can have return. In finance, we like, we prefer, it is more convenient always to use percentages because percentages normalize everything and allow for comparisons between the returns of different assets. So, we always convert everything to percentages, okay? That's why we always say the return is 3%, 5%, 7%. We always use percentages. And I already discussed from the risk, you got risk free rate and risk free rate is the interest rate, or we say the return of a risk-free loan. The approximation for a risk-free loan will be a loan to the government. So, a government bond will be representing the return of a government loan. Will Bond will represent the risk-free long-term rate and a return on a treasury note or on treasury bill will represent the short-term risk-free rate okay that's failing you studied this right already and that's elementary finance elementary financial management this concept between risk and return we call from here, risk return trade off. The risk return trade off says that the only way to get a higher return, higher expected return you need to take a higher risk okay in other words if someone is promising you a very high return with low risk they are lying to you they're trying to cheat you okay it's almost impossible okay next risk Efficiency. One, three, five. Efficiency and let me write it in red. Market. Efficiency. 
representation of state. <coughs> a market is efficient if it incorporates all publicly available information. If it incorporates all information. So, efficiency is associated with information. The price incorporates all information. And if the market incorporates or prices all information, we say that the asset is traded fairly. It's got a fair price. Fair price is a price that incorporates all information about the assets. You get a fair price when the market is efficient. Okay? Fair price. Sometimes we like to say, instead of price, we say in finance, fair value instead of price. Fair value. And we also have in finance what is known as theoretical fair value. Theoretical fair value is a value which is derived from a theoretical model, such as the discount cash flow. Okay? And then we got another definition. We say that a market is efficient where the market price is the same as the theoretical price. Okay? When the market price equals the theoretical price, the market is efficient. And this happens only when all information is incorporated. The fairly clear? You guys? Okay. Okay. One, four. Theoretical or fundamental linkages between spot <coughs> and derivative market. Spot and derivative. That's on page 10. First, we say, what is a spot market? Spot market is a market where the asset trades today, trades now, where you can pay for it and get it immediately. You pay for the stock and you get the stock today or maybe tomorrow, okay? You pay for the rice, you get the rice today. So, spot market is the market for buying and selling, for trading the asset today. And the other one is derivative market. And derivative market, as I explained, is a futures, or option or swap it is always a market related to the future so the characteristic of the sport market is 
now, as in today, and the characteristic of a derivative is in the future. Maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe a year from now. And there is a natural relationship between these two markets. The relationship between the spot and derivative market is based on the fundamental concept of finance known as arbitrage. Arbitrage. Arbitrage is the simultaneous purchase and sale of the same asset on two different market. markets and profiting from it without risk. risk. So, arbitrage number one, simultaneous. Can anyone translate in Thai simultaneous? Simultaneous means at the same time. You do it now, both of them. You do both of them at the same time. How do you say simultaneous? Help? I don't think there's a high word for hmm? I don't think there's a high word for it. Well, there's got to be something. All right. The next one, arbitrage always involves a buy and a sell at the same time. Okay? The third element of arbitrage is profit. You gain and the profit is riskless. No risk. Riskless? Profit. Okay? Riskless. Profit. That's arbitrage. Okay, and then we got the next fundamental concept is the law of one price. And the law of one price says that one asset should have everywhere the same price. So, a stock of Microsoft should have the same price in London, as well as in New York, as well as in Bangkok. Because if the price is different, you can have an arbitrage. If the price in Bangkok is higher than New York, you're going to sell it in Bangkok, buy in New York, and pocket the difference risk. So, the law of one price says that an asset must have the same price in all markets. If the price is not the same, there is an arbitrage where you can profit risk. So, arbitrage from arbitrage follows the law of one price. If prices are different in different markets, it means that somehow there is no way for arbitrage. If there's arbitrage, people will discover it and the price will be the same. And now, the law of one price applies for one asset, but it applies also for a number of different assets. You can get two assets, three assets, ten different assets. Some of them could be long, some of them could be short. How do we call a number of assets together is one. How do we call it? What's the name in finance? A number of assets all linked Together, all used together. 
the fundamental concept. How is it called? Hmm? Perfect answer. Loud, loud. Portfolio. Portfolio. Usually, here in finance, in derivatives, we will be most likely constructing a portfolio of long the underlying asset, short the derivative, or long the derivative, short the asset. So the law of one price applies equally to an asset as well as a portfolio of assets, or we call it asset portfolio. In other words, it applies to one or many assets, okay? Let's see what's next. Here, another concept is that of storage. It's fairly straightforward. I need to give an example so that you can easily understand it. Uh, rice. Today, I'm just picking number for a ton, will cost, I don't know how much it's gonna cost, about 200 US dollars. So, one ton today, now, costs 200 dollars, okay? And let's try that maybe six months from now, six months from now, they're offering the price of 250, 250. If that's the case, what are you going to do? You first buy a 200 today. Next, what do you do? Sell it today on the future. So today, you will sell it for six months from today at a price of 250. Sell. Okay, so you will buy today for 200. Today you agree immediately to sell it six months from now from 250. And what do you do in the meantime while you wait to get your profit? You store it. Store. The same as warehouse. What's warehouse and store? In other words, you buy it today, you put it in the warehouse, you sell it at 250, you store it for six months, and you profit 50. That's it. So you get a profit of 50. We say gain. The gain is 50. Okay. Let's write this out here profit and gain in finance in finance there is no profit the concept of profit does not exist we don't use Profit. Profit is about economic, as in business activity. This university will have a profit or loss. It's a business. Business activity means delivering a good or Service. Here, the service is education. In a massage, it's a service. In a coffee shop, it's a good, okay? So, in gain is in finance. And it relates to investment. 
activity. Okay. So if you are actually growing rice and then selling it, it's an economic activity. You're growing the rice. But if you buy it and sell it in an investment, it is a gain. So here, going back, this is a not a profit, it's a gain of 50. And the last piece is the cost of storage. If it costs only five to store, you have a net gain of 45. If it takes 25 to store, you got a net gain of 25. And if it takes 45 to store, you got a net gain of five, okay? So storage provides the main link between a spot and a derivative market. And usually the difference between the futures price or the derivative price and the spot price will be related to two things. <coughs> Number one is the risk-free interest rate and the storage cost. And the last concept over here is delivery and settlement. Delivery simply means giving, handing the asset to the buyer when the contract is executed, when the contract is executed. So if you're, say we agree six months from now to sell rice, after six months you say deliver the rice. If it's stock, you deliver the stock. So deliver it means the buyer gets possession of the underlying assets. That's delivery. And the last concept is that of settlement. When you buy an option, or sell an option, you pay the price. Okay, the price we call, I'll come later, premium. For a futures market, there is a settlement. And settlement means daily transfer of funds from the loser to the winner. This we call daily settlement. So, daily settlement is a settlement which occurs at the end of every trading day. If the price goes up, the long will get extra money. The short, who's losing money, will pay to the buyer, to the long, the difference. So, every day, the winner gets extra money in his account and every day the loser pays. So this keeps risk management, we'll discuss it at length later on. So settlement simply means clearing the accounts and clearing the differences between the buyer and seller. Okay, I'll be getting into it a lot more in the future. Okay. One, five. Uh, where is the Here. Okay. So that's one, four. One, five. One, five is the roll of derivative markets. And that's on page 12. And the role I already began with on the very first lecture, the two primary roles or the two ways you can use derivative markets 
is number one. To hedge and we call the process of hedging, of hedge, to, to make a hedge, hedging. To hedge means what? To hedge. What is a hedge? What it means to hedge? Risk manage. Again? Risk manage. Not risk manage. Not risk manage. To hedge. What's to hedge? Means the same as to, not manage, to lower. Lower. To lower risk. Lower, same as reduce. So hedging means lowering risk. So you can use derivatives to lower your risk or you can use derivatives to speculate. Well, what would it mean to speculate? Huh? To what speculate mean? No, not to take benefit. No. It's to take risk. You take risk and you may benefit, you may lose. To speculate doesn't mean benefit. It means you take the risk hoping to benefit. But maybe you lose. So you speculate on gold, you buy gold, hoping gold price will go up, but the gold price may go down, and you may lose on your speculation. Okay. So speculate means to take risk. And take in this sense means to increase your risk. So hedging means you're lowering your risk, and speculation means you increase your risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. The idea of speculation is to increase your return. And the only way to increase your return is by increasing your risk. This is the risk return trade-off we discuss. All right? So, okay, let's see what else. So that's one of the main roles. Another, this is together. Another completely different role is that of price discovery. Price discovery helps you better discover to find what the fair value of the underlying asset is. You see how the futures contract of rice is traded and you discover what is the fair value by using all available information today. So you simply see, hey, what's oil trading one year from now? In other words, oil trading at the one year futures. And it says, oh, 102 US dollars. And that's how you know, okay, that's your best guess today about the price one year from now. Doesn't mean this is the price after one year, but this is the best price that we can do today. One year from now, we can't know the price of rice, but based on how much we seed and based on the current weather, this is our best guess today, okay? So, the futures market helps you discover the prices of different assets, of the underlying assets. So, the price discovery means that it provides valuable information
as in knowing the price of a rice a year from now, it will help the farmer or the farm businessman to determine to have more, to have less, or not to have any at all. Okay? So, valuable information to make decisions. The next major role is that of operational. And the main operational advantage, whether it's for stocks, for bonds, is shorting. Sometimes it's very difficult to short an asset directly. And, for example, if you want to short the Dow Jones Index or the SET Index, you got to short 30 stocks. And shorting 30 stocks is too complicated. It's a lot easier to go short one index futures contract. Okay. So, it makes things, makes easy way to short a particular asset. So that's a very important operational role and advantage. And whether you short rice or gold, okay, or the stock market, it is cheaper to do it with futures. So futures contracts are usually cheaper because they are standardized and trade on very high volume because you trade tens of thousands of contracts sometimes hundreds of thousands of contracts every day each transaction is a law in other words we say the main operational advantage is same as low transaction cost low transaction cost means cheaper to trade more convenient to short another part of easier and cheaper to short is better liquidity futures market are a lot more liquid than the spot market so the market provides better liquidity. Okay. And last one, last row over here is market efficiency. So Price discovery and market efficiency. One of the main roles of financial derivatives is to make markets more efficient. They help financial markets to be more efficient. If someone is shorting, let's say, stock index options or futures, that provides extra information both to the futures market and to the spot market. So it brings in extra information and makes the markets more efficient. Okay, one five, one six. Major major criticism. The major criticism of financial derivative markets is that people use them mostly for speculation instead of hedging, okay? And the best way to think about derivatives and the logic about derivatives is the same as guns, right? In, you know. People in America like to say, oh, guns kill people, right? No, not right. Guns don't kill people. People 
kill people by using guns. It's a big difference. In other words, you don't blame the gun for somebody getting killed. You blame the person using the gun. You can use a gun to defend yourself if somebody comes in your house, right? So you can use the gun for defensive purposes, same as catch, or you can use it for aggressive purposes to kill other people or to speculate. So it's important to understand that it is not the fault of the derivatives. Derivatives are not to blame. It is not the derivatives fault, just like it's not the gun's fault. It is those people, those financial institutions who use them in the wrong way, who are eager to take huge risks in order to make huge profits, okay? And if their risks don't work out, then they say, oh, it's the fault of derivatives. No, it's the fault of speculators. It's the fault of bankers. It's the fault of hedge fund managers. It's the fault of people who use them in the wrong way. It's not the fault of derivatives, okay? Now, the problem, second, which is very correct, is that derivatives are extremely complicated. And most people don't know how to use them. And most people respectively use them in the wrong way because they're too complicated, okay? It's like kids playing with a gun and suddenly the gun shoots the other kid, right? So, that's actually more true. In other words, derivatives can be very dangerous in the hands of inexperienced and not knowledgeable person. And that's very important to understand. An inexperienced and knowledgeable person can easily bring down, can bankrupt a whole institution, whole organization based on derivatives. And that's what happens with, and it's a long story, we're not going to get in here, Nick Leeson who traded on in the Singapore exchange derivative and as he was losing money he was investing and increasing his position to eventually many months later to bankrupt a whole major financial institution with hundreds of years of history. So criticism is valid to a certain degree. Okay, but they are true. Now, it is absolutely true that derivatives contributed significantly to the global financial crisis. If we did not have the derivatives, we would not have the crisis to this degree because the derivatives allowed for a real estate bubble to grow and to grow and to grow through securitization and then through credit default swaps, okay? And maybe, what will be for you, derivatives are allowing today for Thailand to grow a real estate bubble of its own. People in Phuket are crazy to buy real estate. Everybody's investing in real estate. People are speculating with real estate, okay? Got a giant real estate bubble that will, at one point, bring down the Thai economy, similar to 1997, in a similar way, because all the conditions for a crisis are here, okay? Now, the question is whether derivatives have a role or not is a different question. All right, that's one six. Well, I did cover one seven. Misuses of derivatives. A lot of times, derivatives are used inappropriately. Okay? A lot of times, derivatives turn out to be extremely dangerous. A lot of times, they are used for mostly speculative purposes. A lot of times, derivatives are used by amateurs, non professionals who don't know what they're doing and lose all of their money, okay, and ruin their own 
lies. And usually the way it happens is, you know, the guy would lose his job, he's going to start trading stocks and whatnot, and later on he's going to switch to derivatives, okay? And when he loses all of his money, suddenly he's not simply bankrupted, but his wife leaves him, he gets a divorce too. A lot of families will get ruined because one of them was not using derivative properly. Okay, that happens quite a lot. Okay, so that's on misuses. One, eight. Careers as derivatives get used more and more. Before 20, 30 years ago, only big banks used derivatives 30 years ago. 20 years ago, only big banks and big corporations used them. 10 years ago, even mid-sized businesses would use derivatives. And now, even smaller derivatives use them. Small businesses use them. In other words, more and more and more businesses get to use derivatives and more and more careers are open for derivatives okay whether you are specializing in derivatives or as a financial manager of a business you will use a derivative to hedge your position so now uh, derivative careers are a lot more widely available and you still need to understand derivatives in general if you're going to be functioning in a bank or any other financial institution, you need to understand derivatives. Okay. And the main career in derivatives will be risk management. Every financial institution will have a risk officer, risk management officer, a person who's responsible for the management of risk. And that person will be using extensively derivatives. Okay? Is that fairly clear? Next is one nine. Let me see. Oh, okay, okay. Well, five. Let's go back to five. This is on page market efficiency, uh, role of derivatives, page 12. One, six. Page 14. Okay. One, seven. Page 15. Okay. One eight is again page fifteen. One nine information. Information on over the counter derivatives is very, very hard to get. It's almost impossible to get because over-the-counter transactions are private transactions between a bank and a corporation. And neither, none of them will tell anybody what they're doing and how, at what prices, volumes, etc. So for over-the-counter derivatives, there is little or no information. For the exchange traded derivatives, the best source of information is the exchange itself. You go, for example, if you want to know about rice traded in Bangkok, you go to the respective exchange and you're going to find information there. So the information, the best source of information will be the exchange itself. Information is on page 16. Uh, sure. Yes, page 16.
Okay. And the last I already did is book organization or book or course overview. And I already explained the overview. Chapter 1 is an introduction. Chapter 2 to chapter 7 is options. Chapter 8 through, was it 11 or 12? 11 will be on forward and futures. And then if we have time, we're going to have one or two chapters concluding on advanced strategies, techniques, and maybe credit derivatives. It's good enough? Cameras?